everyone. Here is Children's Corner Lucy made into 10 play school dresses. It's a great beginner's project and as always all of the materials, timestamps, and a bunch of other goodies are linked down below. First things first, I cut up my pattern pieces and I'm going to try to walk you through this process since this is the trick to only using 3 quarters of a yard instead of 1 and a half yards. So half the fabric. Basically I cut out one front and one back on the fold and then I cut out one front and one back on the selvage end giving about half an inch of seam allowance. So I put one of those pattern pieces on the fold and the other on the selvage and then I would cut those out and then I would flip flop those positions. I put the pattern piece that was on the fold now on the selvage and the one that was on the selvage previously is now on the fold. I hope all of that is making sense. Also because Audrey is so tall for her age, like we are talking 98 percentile here, I added half an inch to the shoulder straps in length and then about two inches in length to the hem of the dress. Just an FYI but I do find that children's corner patterns runs pretty true to the average size across the board. So then the sewing can begin. I joined the lines together down that center back and center front seam so now they would be one piece. I ironed that seam open and then joined them together on one of the side seams. It does not matter which side seam you pick, just pick one. Now when it comes to joining the front of the jumper together, you want to join that same side seam that you previously picked. So an easy way to make sure you do this is to put your fabric right sides together with that lining and then pick up the side seam that matches up and then you're going to join this side seam together, sew that together at your machine. Now you can think about embellishments and I made 10 dresses, some of them had piping and if you are going to use piping it makes it a little bit easier if you trim up the seam allowances to about quarter inch before sewing them to the garment since there's a quarter inch seam allowance here. And there are so many options when it comes to piping and Farmhouse Fabrics has piping from a dollar a yard so it makes it really affordable to add some to your garments. Now if you only want to put piping along the front then a yard will be plenty but if you want to do the entire neckline then you'll need about a yard and a half and if you want to do it in, across the entire neckline as well as that hem then you'll need three yards. Of course Rick Rack is another good alternative or this knife pleated stuff would look adorable too and then again you could just forego any treatment which would save you time and money. As I say it is sewing you do you and some of the fronts I embellished using my machine embroider and it's nothing to brag about but I just thought it was a little cute embellishment here and then I use a bunch of different buttons to embellish the others. These buttons are so inexpensive and just add this little bit of charm at least I think so. But if you want to embellish the front now would be the time to do that before you join the lining to the jumper. So the underneath of all those threads and whatnot are hidden between the lining and the front of the jumper. So once I was done embellishing the front of the jumper then I put the front right side together with the lining. I pinned that all the way around the neckline matching up those straps and making sure that the length was the same on both the lining and the jumper and then I pinned the hem together. If you did add piping or something like that to the neckline it's helpful to sew those previous stitches on top. Sorry the kid kiddos are playing in the background. Um, um, but it's helpful to have those previous stitches on top so you can go right inside those stitches and this gives a very tidy transition between your fabric and the piping with no gaps. And then I turned the entire jumper right sides out by reaching into the jumper on one of those open sides and pulling that fabric through the opening. And then I push those straps out and use this little pointer tool, it is linked below, to push those corners into a neat little, well, a neat little corner. <laughs> Last thing to do on the construction of this dress is to join the other side seam and this is a nice little trick if I do say so myself. So you'll join the sides together matching the side seam up at the top of the jumper and then put some pins in there if you find that helpful. So you're going to start sewing at the top of the lining side. Continue over that armhole seam and keep sewing the entire way down the front side of that jumper. Sew over the hem area and then continue to sew on to that line and then stop. You want to leave a gap on the line side of like a few inches or so. And this gap will allow that seam to fall inside the jumper which hides all of those raw edges and all of that jazz. And then you can stitch the gap together on the lining side and I like to use the ladder stitch to do this so my stitches are all concealed. 
and from there you can join the straps together with a machine button hole. Well, if your machine works better than mine, I should say, long story short, but I recently got a new sewing machine and I'm looking to have my domestic machine replaced as well. But in the meantime, I'm not able to do machine buttonholes, so some of these have hand-done buttonholes and others have snap setter snaps, which are super easy to do, and I have videos explaining both hand-sewn buttonholes as well as snap setter snaps. And there you have it. 10 play dresses for under $100. I hope this video was helpful. If y'all have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. And as always, guys, I appreciate y'all for watching and I hope to catch y'all next time.